Hi guys, uh, I'm here with Dr. Deborah Luftman and we're talking about rosacea. Um, a couple weeks ago, as you might remember, uh, Dr. Luffman asked you to submit some questions on my blog uh, about rosacea, so some of you did, um, and she's going to be answering the questions for me now, so thank you. My pleasure. Um, first question is, I have acne on my chin, forehead, cheeks, and some pink on my nose. Um, I consider myself having moderate acne and I'm scared it's rosacea. What can I do or what products can I use? Well, that's really interesting because it could be rosacea. You know, rosacea is one of the most underdiagnosed skin condition that I see in my office. Mm -hmm. And the reason being, it often looks like acne. So that central face that you're describing, that's a very common area for rosacea to form. So I think the most important thing is to go see your dermatologist and get a real diagnosis so you can get appropriate treatment right away. Okay, okay, and are there products that you can use if you, you know, if your dermatologist diagnoses you? Sure, and so dermatologists has medications that they can actually prescribe, one of them being Oratia, mm -hmm. which is an oral medication. It's actually the only FDA approved oral medication for rosacea. Okay. It's an anti-inflammatory medication, so it helps with these problems that rosacea sufferers have. Okay. And there are also topical medications as well as topical skin care that are really helpful for rosacea. And it prevents long-term complications as well as short-term improvement. Okay, okay, great. Um, and you know what, actually, just to back up a second, what mm -hmm. is rosacea exactly for people that maybe aren't aware? Sure, so rosacea usually occurs after the age of 30, but can occur earlier and later than that. And it often is redness of the skin, bumps that look like acne, but they're central face usually, like mm -hmm. you were describing. Um, it is inflammation that's in the skin. We don't know the exact cause, but something is increasing the inflammation in the skin, and there may be a genetic component to it as well. How can I exfoliate, and with what not to aggravate my skin and keep it from becoming so red? Uh, I'm not sure if it's rosacea or just sensitive skin, but I get broken capillaries very easily. Um, and after only doing my regular cleansing, I have to wait for the redness to go away so I can apply foundation. Right, so that's really you know, a, a poignant question because I have so many patients come to me using scrubs and toners and all kinds of exfoliants when in fact it's irritating the skin. If they have rosacea, it's making the rosacea worse. Mm -hmm. If they have sensitive skin, it's making that worse as well. Mm -hmm. So first thing I say is throw away the scrubs, throw away the toners. Scrubs actually cause micro tears in the skin and can cause broken capillaries as well. How can you exfoliate? Well, using a glycolic acid, which is a fruit acid, in mm -hmm. a cleanser form, lifts the dead skin off the, off the skin um, and exfoliates without scrubbing the skin. Okay. So that's a good way to go. It also does help rosacea and acne. Okay, okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. um, another question is, uh, I have very sensitive skin and almost everything makes it red and itchy. What should I use and what should I avoid? Well, you know, it's so confusing now, all the skincare products out there. Everyone's confused, including me sometimes. So <laughs> you've got to look at your skincare just like you would your food. Look okay. at the label. Look at the ingredients. What can be irritating? Less ingredients is better. Mm -hmm. um, again, no alcohol on the skin. Uh, I like to really avoid oils, especially in rosacea patients and acne patients, because okay. that can feed the rosacea or the acne. And it can be confusing even there because it can say oil free on the front, but in the back it could be flower oil or seed oil. So you want to check the back as well as the front for oil free products. You mentioned avoiding alcohol in the skin. I've heard that uh, drinking alcohol and certain triggers are, are bad as well. Is that is that true? Yes, absolutely. There are some triggers including food and alcohol. Um, anything that is caffeinated, anything that warms up the skin, those are things that can expand the blood vessels and cause redness in the skin. So everything in moderation, really consider what are your triggers and okay. try to avoid them as best as you can. Okay, so avoid the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, then last question is, uh, what's the best way to treat rosacea after 40? I have red patches on my nose and chin that have been more pronounced after turning the big 4-0. Uh, well, it's not just 40. As, you know, I had said before, 30 is usually when it comes on, but it can come on after 40. Rosacea can. Okay. Um, so really treating your skin with you know, respect. Less is more. Mm -hmm. You don't need a lot of products. Really keeping it to very simple skin care seeing a professional, seeing a dermatologist who can really tell you what's the appropriate skin care for your issues. Okay. Um, and then my last question is, how do you differentiate between rosacea and acne? I know some people are confused. They don't really know if they have one or the other. So Often it's, it's very difficult for the lay person to know what the difference is. You know, they both have some similar you know, effects. They have redness. They have bumps. Um, but the age of onset is one thing that's different that we talked about, you know, more in the 30s for rosacea. 
pimples, we see that in both, um, and redness, we see it in both. So flushing and blushing, not so much in acne, mm -hmm. but it comes back down to seeing your dermatologist, I think, and just right. really getting a real diagnosis so you know where you are, where you stand, and how to best treat it. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Thank you for answering all the questions. Pleasure.